Okay, so we have some more awards to cover. We have the AFI Top 10, the NBR Awards. So let's jump right in to the AFI Top 10. We have Anora, The Brutalist, A Complete Unknown, Conclave, Doom Part 2, Amelia Perez, Nickel Boys, A Real Pain, Sing Sing, and Wicked. This is nine of my Oscar Top 10 movies. The only one that isn't on here is, or that is new for me, is A Complete Unknown. I have Blitz in my nine slot right now, or in my November predictions, I had Blitz in my nine slot. Uh, right now, I think those predictions would be pretty different. But yeah, Complete Unknown uh, steps into that spot. Uh, doesn't really surprise me. I'm a little surprised to not see The Substance, or we're also not seeing September 5, and part of me was expecting to see Challengers on here, given that AFI had Spider-Verse in their top 10 last year. They, are, they pick the movies that are popular and well-renowned and loved. But Challengers doesn't make it. So yeah, I think this actually really would motivate me to put A Complete Unknown right in my top 10. Uh, probably have The Substance and, you know, movies like The Substance and Seed of the Sacred Fig and All We Imagine is Light just kind of right on the outside looking in. But yeah, I think A Complete Unknown, this, this feels pretty big for that movie, especially because the reception, people are starting to see it, they're really liking it, everyone's saying that Timothy Chalamet is great, they think that he is one of the front runners to win Best Actor. Like, it's either Chalamet or Adrian Brody, apparently, which is pretty huge for Chalamet. We're gonna move on to the NBR, and I'm excited to see these because I heard it was pretty crazy. So, starting off with this indie top 10 here, I mean, it's pretty much, I think, what you would expect. I'm a little confused about their criteria because I'd figure that if they considered a movie like Anora to be an independent film, it would be on here, but I guess they're not considering it as that. So you don't see a movie like Anora here. But top five documentaries is interesting because it's missing no other land. That That's very interesting to me. I mean, I don't think that is a big deal that like the NBR is missing no other land, but just something to keep an eye out for because it's winning at a lot of places right now. It won at the Gothams, it won uh, NYCC, so or NYFCC, my bad. Top 5 International, also pretty much what you would expect. I love seeing that gr The Girl with the Needle is here. I thought Girl with the Needle was a fantastic film when I got to see that at Cannes, so I'm just glad to see it. Uh, I'm still here, that's good. All We Imagine is Light, Santosh. Don't know much about Universal Language, I'm not gonna lie. Amelia Perez is not on here, but I'm wondering if maybe they don't even count it as an international film like that's the thing some of these awards you just don't really necessarily know the voting criteria where does Amelia Perez actually count since it features a lot of American star power and then does Anora count as an indie film when it's like been doing so well at the box office I don't know okay top 10 films here we go Anora, Baby Girl, A Complete Unknown, Conclave, Furiosa, F Furiosa, Furiosa, oh wow, okay, uh, that's that's great, um, Gladiator 2, uh, Juror number 2, Queer, a real, a real Pain, and Sing Sing, okay, I mean, I, I just, I love seeing that Furiosa is on here, I think Furiosa is fantastic, that's just one of my favorite films of the year, and nobody's talking about it, and I'm like, why is nobody talking about Furiosa when it was just so good? But yeah, I mean, I don't see any huge, or actually, where's Wicked? Where, where, where is Wicked? Where is Dune Part 2? Never mind. Like, it took me a second to register that we were missing some big things. Yeah, no Wicked, no Dune Part 2, no Amelia Perez. Uh, okay, <laughs> um, that's interesting. Very interesting. Stunts goes to Furiosa. That's awesome. Love to see it. Cinematography for Nosferatu. I have not seen Nosferatu, I mean, obviously, I'm a college student in Ithaca, New York, it's pretty impossible, but that that's great, you know, I've, from what I can tell from the trailers, and just in general with Robert Eggers' films, like, his cinematography is always fantastic, so definitely a dark horse. Oh wait, okay, this is interesting, so for documentary they have Sugarcane, so I guess they do top films and then a winner after that? as if all the other top films are runner-ups. Okay, so documentary is Sugarcane. I don't know much about Sugarcane, but still, No Other Land is not here. 
which is odd. Seed of the Sacred Fig gets Best International Film? Okay, that is, that's big. I think that that's pretty big because I haven't seen Seed at any of the other awards previously, like getting a lot of recognition. So I'm, I'm glad that it's getting this here. I think that that's huge. It's beating out All We Imagine is Light, which has felt like a bit of a powerhouse in terms of how it was doing at the New York Film Critics Society and then at the Gothams. So seeing Seed right back in the race is nice. Flow, best animated feature. Great! I talked about that in the last Awards Reaction video about how much I just care about flow and why I think it's awesome that it's winning all of these, so this is great. So I've been complaining about No Other Land not being anywhere, and here it is uh, for NBR Freedom of Expression Award, so it is getting recognition. I was worried that it wasn't getting any recognition, it is getting that which is probably why it didn't get nominated or win for documentary. Th this makes a lot more sense to me. First award for Wicked with the Spotlight Award with the creative collaboration of Cynthia Rivio and Ariana Grande. Best Adapted Screenplay, Sing Sing. That's, love to see that. Best Original Screenplay is Hard Truths with Mike Lee. Okay, that that is, I have not seen that anywhere. I did not even know that that was like a thing. Um, I mean, that's, that's great. Uh, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that something just uh, very unexpected is winning there. I'm surprised it's not a Nora, you know, or, or like the Brutalist or, yeah, it's not interesting. Well, actually the Brutalist wasn't even a top film for them. So I guess I just don't really like the Brutalist here. But yeah, I'm surprised it's not a Nora. India Donaldson winning directorial debut. That's great. Good one's a fantastic directorial debut. Mikey Madsen, breakthrough performer. That That's good. Good award. But then I'm guessing that means that she's not going to win their best actress or best performer award. So I guess we'll see when we get there. Best ensemble conclave. I was kind of expecting to see Wicked or something like that here. So I'm kind of glad to see Conclave's here, but really like, yeah, Conclave is shaping up to be a pretty heavy contender, which honestly could possibly win Best Picture, given the box office, given the reception, just it's a very likable film, and it's winning things like this, Best Ensemble at NBR. So yeah, Conclave is really, things are really shaping up for it. Supporting Actress is Elle Fanning from A Complete Unknown. I haven't, I, I have not seen that anywhere either. Okay, they're doing a lot of interesting stuff here. So I'm not like mad, but they're still sticking with Kieran Culkin for real pain. Yeah, I, it's just the, the more we're going through this, like these awards, it's just like he's sweeping right now. But supporting actress is not clean cut whatsoever. Zoe Saldana has not won anywhere, at least nowhere that I've seen yet. And like, like, I thought she was going to possibly sweep. And now you have Ariana Grande is becoming a huge contender. So really, it, it feels like that category is just wide open. Nicole Kidman, best actress. Okay, okay. That, that, they're, they're, they cooked with that one a little bit. I, I like that. I like to see that. I do wish it could have been like a Demi Moore, but I, I like that pick. Also, The Substance wasn't the top film. Just speaking of Demi Moore, I just realized The Substance wasn't the top film for them. And Daniel Craig, best actor for queer. That That's good. That's nice. I mean, it's it's good for him, really. I mean, his campaign is looking a little messy right now, especially I, I was really feeling like after seeing a different man win at the Gothams, I was like, they should really start ramping up the Sebastian Stan campaign and pulling down the Daniel Craig campaign, but maybe not if he's winning at NBR. But again, they're doing a lot of weird stuff that I don't know how well it's gonna translate. Mm. Oh my, whoa, okay. <laughs> um, John M. Chu for best director at, for Wicked. I don't like that. I, I, don't, li I, I don't like that. That is why. Of, of all the things for Wicked, is Wicked, does Wicked get best film too? Or is it just gonna be Chew? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so yeah, they just loved Wicked. It got best film. Arivo didn't get best actress though, and then Ariana Grande didn't get supporting actress, but John M. Chu got director, and then Wicked got best film. So with that being said, these are all of my reactions to AFI, to NBR. What did you think of these awards? What did you think of my takes on them? Please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I would love to start discussion 
I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.